All right. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Northern Virginia Data Platform Meetup. This is our SQL Server Workshop, our SQL Server 22 Workshop Series. And uh, we're in, uh, gosh, almost near the we're near the end, right? I can't believe it. It's, uh, we started back in February, and here we are now. Um, um, again, I'm Tim McAlilly, and a little bit about me, if you... Uh, I know everybody on this call has probably seen it, but if you're just kind of looking at the recording, that's cool too. Again, Timothy McAlilly. I'm a senior cloud solution architect, specialized in SQL Server and Azure Data Services and Power BI. And um, and Azure Data Services, it's a big umbrella. It's Azure SQL, Azure SQL Synapse, SQL Pools, uh, Azure SQL Managed Instance, Azure, you know, SQL Server Workloads and Virtual Machines. Um, that's a lot of stuff. And then Power BI, of course, is branched out to things like Microsoft Fabric. We'll probably uh, set aside some time to talk about Fabric on uh, our November meetup, our kind of final meetup of 2020, 2023. I got 24 years in IRT. Oh, I can change this slide. Hold on one second. I'm going to change it live right in front of us. I have 11 years with Microsoft. I may change it now. I have 11 years with Microsoft. Um, and I've been working with the Meetup Group since 2023 when it was uh, Nova SQL User Group. <clears throat> and then uh, it was run by Jim Rotan and Brad Moran. Brad Moran passed away. God rest his soul. <clears throat> you can hit me on... <clears throat> excuse me. Goodness gracious. You can hit me on LinkedIn. I had a meeting today. I had like an hour and a half long meeting. <clears throat> with a very clear throat. Um, you hit me up on LinkedIn, of course, and I live in the D.C. area. I got a wife of 23 years and then a 20-year-old a daughter who's a judge. <laughs> She's a... a what's, what's wrong is that uh, my wife and I, we consider ourselves educated and, you know, progressive-minded folks, but if you were a, uh, a, a, a educated progressive-minded 20-year-old, <laughs> somehow you're in there, you're, you're there, you're their enemy. Not their enemy, but you know, you everything you say is wrong. <laughs> Not too bad. She's gotten out of that a lot. She's a was a very feisty thirteen through sixteen. Calmed down a little bit at seventeen, and then as uh, you know, as she's entering or she's in her junior year in college, um, you know, she's she's kind of understands what it took to get her uh, to that third year of college, and uh, she appreciates it a lot more. Anyway. I've got a 10-year-old daughter who's just as dramatic. She's dramatic now. She's going to be a dramatic 20-year-old. God help me. Anyway, I've got uh, two cats. They're they're the same age. They're sisters. They're four-year-old cats, tabby cats. They're running around here somewhere. And then I have my uh, uh, thirsty bloodhound, Lily. I don't know if you can see her over there. She's a yellow lab, just as gentle as can be. Uh, I say gentle, but... Um, you know, I got the windows open up here. It's uh, Northern Virginia, Centerville, Virginia. It's a nice uh, 65 degrees outside. So if somebody happens to walk by, you know, she needs to uh, she just lay claim to this front yard here. So she'll let the passersby know she's here. So you might hear barking uh, now and again. But <clears throat> she seems to be in nap land for right now. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Um, this SQL 22 workshop, it is uh, put together by uh, the SQL Server product group, uh, and it was presented to me and some other colleagues a year ago, uh, last September, September 22. And October of 22, uh, Microsoft SQL product group kind of moved around internally and did these seminars for us to kind of flip this out to you, uh, the crowd, and also to, uh, you know, other you know, potential customers. <laughs> But the intention here is to learn more about SQL Server 22 and to um, take a look at the content and take a look at the demo. So you'll want to take a look at this slide in particular because it's got links to different areas, the videos, blogs, uh, MS Learn, demos, documentation, the slide decks. You'll, take, you'll want to take a look at this. And this again, this slide deck, I'll, I'll, we'll go there. Uh, momentarily, but it's on the SQL Server 22 GitHub site, and I'll, I'll, I'll before we jump into the content, I'll show you that where that is. Goals for this workshop: I'll just build the slide out. Wanted to make something that was, you know, interactive, that a little bit more fun, 
uh, to kind of go through. Uh, maybe if you're thinking about upgrading to SQL Server 22 or maybe talk about specific key features that work in SQL 22 and maybe, uh, you know, try, build these labs at home, try these labs and try to try these new features, uh, you know, and walk away with uh, <clears throat> these resources that you can use to learn more. Uh, Meetup times again, we, wow, uh, uh, 2023 is almost gone. So uh, we started back in February with sort of a setting up your workshop environment and then kind of uh, did intro and connecting to SQL Server or connect SQL Server 22 to Azure and uh, accelerate performance and talked about, uh, spent a couple of months talking about security, scale availability, scale. <laughs> I've made up a word. We spent a couple of months talking about security, scalability, and availability. Sorry, I want to be hooked on phonics to pronounce that. <clears throat> and then today we're going to talk about uh, data virtualization and object storage. And then uh, in October, we'll talk about enhancing our application with new T-SQL capabilities. Uh, November 17th, that's going to be a review of what we learned, but we uh, we might switch that in or make a modification and bring in someone to talk about Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. I know we're not a Power BI user group per se, but Fabric is still Fabric is still pervasive uh, in terms of its impact, right? So it hits Synapse, it hits SQL data sources, it hits Power BI for sure. It's baked into Power BI, but I think we're going to uh, start talking about Fabric. As part of that, we're going to do some events in 2024. We're going to do another OpenAI chat GPT event in the spring. Uh, I don't know what date yet. We haven't even reserved the rooms. I know Prashant and I are just talking about it. Uh, we're also going to do a Power BI Microsoft Fabric slash Copilot event in June. Why June? Because I've got stuff to do. I've, <laughs> I've got, I've got uh, um, uh, March uh, March, April, uh, March, March, early April, I've got the chat GPT event. Uh, May, I uh, go to my commencement. I graduate with my um, master's degree from Harvard in information systems. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into that. Plus, I've got, we're um, celebrating, uh, doing like a double birthday celebration for my 10 year old and 20 year old. They're going to be 11 and 21. And uh, they both want to go, well, one wants to go to Disney and the other wants to go to Harry Potter's whatever it is at Universal Studios. I've been there, but they, <laughs> we're going. So uh, May is out, May is out. Um, um, but also we're gonna do a mix of in-person and virtual events in 2024. I don't know the schedule there either. I've even, oh, that reminds me, I have a, a person that's scheduled to speak for us in June of 2024. I need to check with the incoming leadership because we're going to get a change of leadership. I'm no longer going to run the meetup and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, it's going to be uh, AJ Galopoli. He's a more than capable, a very energetic um, a fellow who um, you'll really like. Uh, and, and Prashant will be around, but I'll be around for the, the events as well. So I'll be kind of, I'll just be on a advisory set. Uh, the resources and slides for all of this is that the, on the GitHub site, right? We're going to go there on the the, the aka.ms uh, forward slash SQL 22 workshop site. Uh, and then all of our slide, all of our videos are recorded. We're recording all of our meetings, sorry. And then we post them to YouTube. And make sure you subscribe and like. Yeah, subscribe. That's what they say, right? Make sure you like and subscribe. I think you're supposed to smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. I'm not good with words. Um, anyway, <laughs> subscribe it, like it. Anyway, here's real quick before we jump into the content. Uh, let's take a look at where I'm where this uh, GitHub site is. It's right here. This is the SQL workshop, SQL 22 GitHub workshop. You get the workshop. It's got all of the learning objectives, just like the slides the business applications for the workshop, the technologies that are used in the workshop. And then, you know, you can um, clone this repo in a work in this and you can, and for setup, it even has, you know, set up recommendations if you're using a Windows host or a, um, a Linux or a Linux container. If it's got an addition to SQL Server, it's got uh, the backups that you can just download. And then workshop details. For the workshop details, 
uh, for today. If you dig into access new um, uh, data virtualization, so you you know you get right off the bat, you get a video that you can go and take a look at, and you can look at the exercises in the workshop. The extra, the first exercise is open row set uh, against a Parquet file, and then using Parquet files with S S3 compatible storage, and using a Delta table with S3 compatible storage, and then backup and restore with S3 compatible storage, and using uh, S3 with Minio for data virtualization, and Minio is a, a third-party software, uh, so our third-party service you can use for data virtualization. But you get all the um, the uh, exercises, the steps in the exercises, any scripts you can download. And well, I'm just looking at it through the um, I'm just looking at this through the um, uh, the the notebook, but you can also go and uh, look at it through this sort of the scripts view of this. You can open up the workshops and you can go into data virtualization and you can see, you know, you can go into the Delta files area and you can see what the exercises are here and you can um, you can go into the uh, open row set section and 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 you know you can see what the the scripts or the exercises are and when when you go to the um, SQL workshop top area you can download the cut you can download all the scripts here so you can do you know all the scripts that are presented you can download run those locally or run them on a virtual machine um, very good, very good uh, around this. So we, this is a pretty uh, thorough workshop. And this lab, these labs today are very uh, cool that you can uh, uh, check out, right? You can go and do row set, open Parquet with S3, open Delta tables with S3, or use tables, use Parquet with S3, use Delta with S3, use S3 object storage for backup and restore. And our recorded demo is uh, being able to backup and restore from, um, I believe, a Parquet file. No, doing open row set command against a parquet file. Sorry about that. All right. So let's jump into the content here. Nope, nope, wrong one. Let's jump into the content. Oh, real quick. Uh, for the recordings. Go out to our YouTube channel. We've got a playlist specifically for the SQL Server 22 workshop. Plus, we have um, uh, playlists for our Nova SQL meetups, except for the SQL Server 22 workshops, and then uh, the global data fest, the data fest that we recorded uh, back pre-COVID time. All righty. So I'm going to stop the recording. Bye-bye recording. and go into exciting experience yep I, I assume you're talking about the harry potter stuff all right so let me stop recording oh not recording i stopped my video camera sorry about that all righty also if you haven't picked it up amazon single server 22 revealed bob ward's book very good book i'm <laughs> I don't get any money for that. I'm just saying it's a good book. I've got it downloaded on my Kindle. Thing about Kindle is you can't copy paste uh, or I can't like copy passages out of there, but it's okay. I can, couldn't do it if it was a hardcover book. Here's how the, the workshop's broken down. It's a little, this slide's a little bit redundant, but we've got the, you know, we talked about SQL Server 22, the features that it has, some of the hero features. And then the, the rest of it's broken down an, an expansion on these hero features. There's connectivity to Azure, um, a Synapse link, um, uh, excuse me, a connection to Synapse link. You can have a, uh, a connection to um, Azure SQL Synapse SQL pools and SQL Server 22. Uh, you can have a uh, SQL Server 22 connection to managed instance. Of course, you can back up to URL. Uh, you can also have um, Microsoft Purview. Uh, the, you know, cont not control, but impact SQL Server 22 with policies. You can download the Azure Arc extension agent and um, do things like have the best practices analysis, 
purview that I just mentioned as your Active Directory. Um, you can also do uh, performance with the, the built-in query intelligence. We talked about the enhancements to the engine around intelligence query processing, sort of a suite of enhancements that have been done since particularly 2016, 2017, 2019. Um, and they've just expanded that to 22. So it's basically it's a way to say it's not self-tuning your database, but it certainly helps. It certainly goes a long way. And then scalability, security, availability. We talked about this ledger and availability group enhancements and security enhancements. And then today we're going to talk about storage with data virtualization. And then next week we'll, or next month we'll talk about new capabilities. So again, we're going to cover real quickly intro to SQL Server. I mean, with um, you know, when you're looking at where SQL servers come from, come from, you know, really using 2016 as a demarcation, you know, with the arrival of query store and be able to access external table, but query those are external data, not external tables, but querying external data as though it's a table through Polybase, be able to have column level encryption with always encrypted, being able to have um, row level security and dynamic data masking. Those came around in 2016. Uh, SQL Server 2016 runs faster and the standard edition also gets a, a few more goodies bundled into it as, as well as, you know, um, Enterprise Edition. You still uh, have some things you don't get with, inter with standard, but it's uh, certainly a lot more than SQL Server 2014 and 2012. Uh, SQL Server 2017, we introduced SQL Server that runs on Linux, SQL Server that runs in containers, um, adaptive query processing, automatic tuning, uh, support for graph databases, support for machine learning services. Uh, and then 2019, digging into data virtualization and intelligent query processing, accelerated database recovery, which really helped to speed up restore operations, but also uh, log synchronization for always on availability group architectures and then data classification at the database level. But you can also database, you can also have data classification at the database level that complements or ties into Microsoft Purview, which also does, you know, enterprise, uh, very broad data classification, data dictionary, schema mapping, etc. Then we tried to make sure that, you know, SQL Server is available from, you know, from wherever you are, right? If you're on the edge or if you're out, you know, in, you know, in Azure uh, with, you know, familiarity about the environment that you're working in with standard tools and very flexible. So we've got Azure, SQL Edge and SQL Server 22 and SQL on Linux and containers and Azure Arc enabled. Uh, SQL Server and managed instances and SQL Server on virtual machines and Azure SQL managed instances and Azure SQL databases, all sort of being part of this SQL family to provide SQL wherever you are. And then with the, you just build the slide out. Oops, sorry, went one too far. And then with uh, SQL Server, we're trying to make sure that uh, if you're on the edge or on, you know, uh, deployed on Azure or on on a uh, an Azure Arc enabled uh, server, you know, we're we're trying to make sure that our hero capabilities can reach you. And so we've got features like link feature for managed instance, you know, to improve your business connectivity, and Azure Synapse Link, you know, providing a SQL Server 22 data source for an Azure Synapse Link SQL pool, so you can do reporting off of your Synapse environment where data is coming from Azure SQL, excuse me, from SQL Server 22, but, you know, getting um, transferred into your SQL pool. Uh, being able to get visibility about what's really running inside of your, your data estate, your SQL servers, your Azure SQL, your SQL Server workloads on Azure Virtual Machines, your SQL managed instance nodes with, you know, Microsoft Purview and looking at insights and data lineage and being able to create these policies to interact with your data on your Purview system that percolate down to your your data tier. It's obviously secure. One of the hero features for security is Ledger for SQL Server. 
you know, this immutable change roster or change record that's not part of your database. The ledger itself is in a um, um, storage outside of your database engine that's encrypted uh, that you can provide permissions to for auditors, but you can't, you know, make changes to that uh, data that's protected by ledger because it's a update only history of things that have been going on on that table. And then the uh, built-in query intelligence, right, for uh, OLTP and OLAP workloads, uh, very strong on that. Just build this out. And this is a little bit redundant. Oh, sorry. We'll jump into our content here in just a second. And then the uh, SQL Server 22 capabilities, specifically the cloud connected, right? Azure Synapse uh, managed inst or Azure, huh? Azure managed instance link. Um, Azure Synapse Link, Microsoft Purview, or you know some cloud connected technologies, built-in query intelligence, security scalability and availability, data virtualization and object storage, and then we've extended um, the T-SQL capabilities, particularly around JSON, time series data, and some new features in T-SQL. We'll talk about those next month. So now let's talk about new sources or accessing new sources with our date with data virtualization and object storage, right? We've got data virtualization with Polybase, with SQL Server 22, backup and restore with uh, S3 object storage. We've already reviewed the exercises, then we got a knowledge check and summary. We don't have as much content to talk about today, but and that's okay. Uh, but I do want to show you a couple of things that you'll, you know, you'll want to. Uh, to go and look at. You'll want to take a look at, and again, this is the tech, the SQL Server 22 documentation. Okay, Teams. Ugh, Teams. There's a couple of labs you can go check out. There's Intro to SQL Server 22 Data Virtualization. Again, you'll talk, you'll learn about the benefits and of data virtualization and you'll know what polybase is you'll know what object storage is and install and configure polybase on sql server 22 and access external data on sql server 22 or let's just say you want to look at just the documentation and the documentation introducing data virtualization with polybase you know what is polybase what are the supported sql server products that support polybase what are some sql server 22 Polybase enhancements, right? S3 compatible object storage, uh, connectors that could separate from Polybase services, uh, support for pi, uh, Parquet file format, support for a Delta file format, and then uh, create external table as select. So you can have Polybase use these CTASs to create an understand, uh, create an external table, and then export in parallel the results of a, a select statement that's going to Azure Data Lake store, Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage, or a, a, a standard Azure State, a, Azure storage account, sorry about that, or a S3 compatible object. So there's a lot of different changes we have. Then there's some supported poly-based connectors. There's Oracle, MongoDB, Teradata, uh, generic ODBC, Azure Storage, Hadoop, SQL Server, S3. Now notice there's some pieces there around SQL Server, uh, 22 um, uh, doesn't support Hadoop, um, and I think I have it on a slide. I need to change that. Um, there's um, uh, 2016 introduced connection support for Hadoop, but SQL Server 22, we don't. Um, uh, SQL Server 22 introduced uh, S3 compatible storage. And then there's some support for Oracle with SQL Server 2019. If you've got CU up, uh, CU uh, 19, and then with SQL Server 22, CU uh, 2, there's also support for Oracle. And then some sample connectors are here, SQL Server, Oracle, Teradata, MongoDB, Hadoop, S3 compatible storage, CSV, and Azure Blob storage. I think the reason we don't pr um, Connect to Hadoop is I think we're trying to push uh, Synapse and um, our HD Insight product. I think um, I'll I'll double check and find out. Let me do one thing. Thought we were down here. Oh my God. Yeah. 
one second. I want to make sure I got the source right. Change that. Okay, guys. All right, so let's kind of dig in a little bit. So what does, you know, Polybase, we introduced Polybase, um, not introduced it, but we had some improvements to Polybase, uh, you know, SQL Server 2019. You know, integrating data from numer numerous data silos, you know, there's a complex piece. If you're trying to do ETL or ELT, that's an absolute challenge. So the solution for SQL Server 19, you know, access data from multiple sources without having to move that data. That's the big piece. And that's, you know, side note, that's kind of like the the magic sauce and fabric as well. You know, you can do these shortcuts, internal, external shortcuts that can hit the data. You can query from it without having to move it. You know, it integrates with data virtualization. You can hit it with external tables and T-SQL, and then you can leverage, you know, Polybase, you know, distributed, uh, scaled out Polybase. And you can see here, ODBC, NoSQL relational databases, and big data. So what is Polybase? Polybase is a technology uh, in SQL Server that lets you hit external data. Uh, it enables SQL Server, your SQL Server instance to run T-SQL queries that are going to read data from external data sources, external tables. Uh, it was first introduced in 2016, and Polybase allows you to run these queries on external data. It did for 2016 in Hadoop or Azure Blob Storage or maybe some other type of relational database management system, NoSQL, etc. Some key points about Polybase, you know, it's got a unified query service. You can use uh, standard uh, T-SQL if you're going to query external data. You know, you don't need to learn a new language. I did these slides. So, yes, I am reading because I did the slides. Um, um, let me bring this up. Um, uh, you can define these external tables. Data. You can define these external tables that map to data in the external data sources. And these tables act as a bridge, allowing you to query the external data as if it was a local SQL Server table. And there is uh, a concept of pushdown computation, and that's when possible. Polybase is going to push the computation to the external data source rather than pulling the data into SQL Server, then process it. And that helps uh, improve uh, performance and processor utilization, et cetera, especially if you're going to be pulling in really large data sets. Uh, data movement, you know, if the, if, the, if you can't do pushdown, Polybase can still move the data from the source into the SQL Server for processing. Some supported external data sources, Blob, Data Lake, uh, or other RD, RDBMS, you know, Oracle, there's ODBC and NoSQL. And then you can take a look at the documentation for the, the, other, the additional sources. Uh, Polybase uses open database connectivity, uh, ODBC, for... Um, uh, connectivity to, I know maybe the C is redundant with the word connectivity. Anyway, Polybase uses ODBC to, uh, for connectivity to external data sources. And there's with Polybase, if you wanted, you can do scale out groups. You can install Polybase on additional SQL nodes and then create a, a Polybase scale out group, which lets you, you know, leverage that paralyzed data, parallelized reading, data reading from external sources. Enhancing your performance for large data sets. Side note, with uh, Azure Synapse SQL pools, if you're going to be doing data loading, you'll want to leverage Polybase as well because Polybase in Synapse uses sort of a, a bridge service and connects directly with your um, compute nodes to push data in rather than having to go and let the control node figure all that out. Um, and then to use Polybase, you need to set up and configure appropriate connectors and scale out groups and then define the external data sources and the tables. So, you know, some additional challenges, right? Uh, I need to access data on modern object storage systems through, through SQL, right? Through Amazon S3, for example, right? You have your SQL engine, which can process open row set, right? Open row set is literally a T-SQL based command that will access external data and then run a query on it. But we'll take a look at the syntax of open row set. 
you can also leverage external tables and also you can create a create external table as select or CTAS around it, right? And, or depending on what you're doing, um, you can leverage these a, a REST APIs with Azure Blob Storage, Data Lake, S3 compatible storage. You can hit um, Parquet and Delta and CSV and text data um, with these, you know, the modern storage objects, in other words. You know, you can also do backup and restore operations. So why Parquet and Delta files, right? You know, S3 uh, cr uh, was created by Amazon. It's an open protocol. It's popular, um, uh, inexpensive, durable, uh, unlimited. Parquet, open source file format. The schema is built in. It's, it's really a, it has a columnar format for efficient compression and retrieval. And then Delta Lake, it's a open source storage architecture that has Delta tables. And you can com uh, combine that with Parquet files and you can get some general low level transaction log support. So now when you throw this in with SQL Server 22, you get support for open row set, external tables and CTOS also uh, leveraging the HTTPS REST APIs, hitting Azure Data Lake storage or S3 compatible storage, which could you know, hit Parquet and Delta and CSV objects on that storage or poly-based services against relational or NoSQL types um, uh, data services as well. And you can use, you can use these REST APIs uh, to hit virtualized data. So you have your SQL engine, you might have installed your polybase feature and set your configuration for your polybase and it's all ready to go with your best practices and you have your database and your system tables and that's where you create your your master key and your credential and then go and connect to your external data source right you uh, create table as select uh, or you know access data that's on Azure um, blob storage or data lake or s3 compatible to pull in parquet or delta or csv files and then bring in once you bring in these external file formats query those external file file formats with this open row set query statement and then build or build an external table uh and then query from that external table and then use your user tables tables that are in your database join those against your external tables um to you know get the query data back that you were looking for and then you can also use s3 compatible storage to do backups right you know backup database and then you'd put the the s3 url and the actual uh backup file that you've got uh that you're going to back up to or restore from um and then you can use these rest apis to pull things like or the rest apis and these other, other third-party plugins like Minio or Pure Storage or Hitachi or the tools from HP or Dell to um, assist you with these restore operations through a REST API. We won't do the exercises, but you know, SQL Server can now access external data sources through REST API to S3 object providers. Uh, creating Delta files on a REST API data source from a select, uh, access Parquet files on OB, ODBC data sources. Really, it's A and B, right? It can use the REST API um, to uh, S3 object providers, or they can access um, uh, Delta files on a REST API source from, from a select. And you can restore a database from AWS RDS to SQL Server 22, true or false. And that's absolutely true. So let's take a look, just real in quick and in summary real quick. Let's take a, you know, uh, oh, you know what? Let's do, let's do a, a real quick demo. And then we'll come back. So this is a quick demo on using open row set and connecting to SQL Server on your data lake, you know, a file on your data lake here. Sorry about that, I'm letting it go. So you've got, I know you're gonna do um, 
you're going to query a file of parquet files on stored on a stored on a, a storage account and then just do a count of how parquet files are in a folder so we're going to do select star uh open row set from and then put in the path to your blob storage And then we're putting in not the file name specifically, but we're putting in um, um, we're, we're looking for a file based on um, a, a date range, it looks like. And then we'll get that information back, right? We've done an open row set. We'll get the vendor, pickup date and time, passenger count, trip distance, et cetera. Here from our, our New York City taxi data file. And then we're going to do let's count how many files are in the folder again select files and file path from and again another open row set using the path to the blob storage in this case the folder and we'll run this and it'll come back and it'll give us a count of how many files are in that folder and it'll give us the files and the file path and that's what we have here right there all end in parquet And again, this is a little bit of an update on the actual workshop itself that you can go in and take a look at. And you can see the different commands that you can run with open row set and then creating external tables and querying external tables. So you can go in and leverage. And then do a select from the, the actual external table. Query external table, run a query against the table created to access a parquet data. So nothing in this query says anything about parquet right here, step six. But the external data source, the external, ta the external table uh, points at, a, at, at parquet itself. All right. So just in summary, again, I mentioned earlier it was going to be a shorter session. You know, the new REST API data sources like Azure Blob Storage and Azure Data Lake Storage in 2 and S3, um, uh, compatible object store providers are you know, part of the new API data sources. The you know, SQL Server 22 now natively recognizes Parquet and Delta table file formats, and then SQL Server and then Backup and Restore uh, support native backups to and from uh, S3 compatible object store providers. What are your questions before we wrap up? Are there any questions? All right. Well, seeing no questions, let's go and have a good weekend. And I want to go and wish you all well. And we'll I'll talk to you next month. And we will do um, uh, next month. We'll do the T-SQL uh, enhancements. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.